specific learning objectives of our lecture are understand the anatomy of the heart that helps in its function the heart has shown two types of chambers one is red and the other is blue and here we see a cut section across the ventricle and you see one portion contains red blood one portion contains blue blood the red blood containing portion is called the left ventricle it has a thick wall the right ventricle has got blue blood in it and it has got a thin wall here we see the spiral arrangement of the fibers of the heart that is arranged spirally around the ventricles the cardiac muscle tissue has got contractile element the muscles contract and pump blood into great vessels and it has got conducting element impulse arises in the sa node and is conducted to the whole of the heart to special muscle fibers in the heart that are called conducting tissue cardiac muscle is a striated muscle like the skeletal muscle aapne nerve muscle pada hua hai in the skeletal muscle you saw that there were h bands i bands and a bands in the muscle similarly they are present in the cardiac muscle these fibers are interdigitating with each other this means that one cell where it ends up another cell starts from there and similarly cells join at the endings so that a rounded rounded circle is formed around the chamber of the heart they are arranged spirally around the circumference of the heart you see here these are arranged spirally they start here and they are arranged spirally around the circumference of the heart and the fibers that have gone down here are wound against this whole circumference are coming fixed on this side and again in the oblique arrangement and attaching to this tendinous portion septum between the atria and the ventricle this area this yellow line this is not a muscular tissue this is a fibrous tissue and the atria and ventricles are separated from each other by this fibrous tissue ye jo aap dekh rahe hain this is right atrioventricular valve the right atrium is above and below this is the right ventricle and the valve is arranged in the fibrous septum here you see the left atrioventricular valve and the valve is arranged in the fibrous septum in the ring of fibrous ring and this is separating the left atrium from the left ventricle whenever the cardiac muscle is dead the fibers do not divide to replace it this means dead cardiac muscle is lost forever mitochondria you know what mitochondria are they are the power house of the cell and in the cardiac muscle total cell mass has got 25 to 30% of the muscle of the mass is by made up by the mitochondria these cardiac muscle fibers use free fatty acids for energy mainly what is the source of energy it is atp how do you make atp any knowledge of the fsc you know that the atp is made from the glycolysis of the glucose breakdown of the fat cell of the fat chain, fatty acid chains and so these free fatty acids are used for energy mainly by the heart and the rest of the energy can come from glucose breakdown the cardiac muscle has got extensive blood supply that is one capillary is supplying one cardiac muscle fiber end to end anastomosis of the cells occurs due through desmosomes i will be showing this to you in the next slide what is a desmosome 
the gap junctions are present at the intercalated disks what are the gap junctions you have studied in the first chapter but i will be showing it to you in the next slide the cardiac muscle fibers are composed of contracting cells and these are 99% and it is also having pacemaker and conducting tissue and that is 2% of the tissue is contractile and conducting is conducting tissue 99% is contractile tissue the contractile myocardial cells are having this shape striations you can see the striations here you can see the striations here light vein dark vein dark vein so this area now i told you that i will be showing you desmosomes the cell membrane of one muscle fiber ye jo aapko double line nazar aa rahi hai this double line is the cell membrane of one cardiac muscle fiber and this is the double line lipid bilayer the cell membrane of the other cardiac muscle fiber now here you see that thick fibers are crossing each other and they are joining this space extracellular space mein they are joining the muscle fibers to each other through desmosomes and then there are other areas in which there is deficiency of the cell membrane this is the cell membrane of one cell this is the cell membrane of the other cell here this is the cell membrane of one cell and this is the cell membrane of the other cell and in between there is a gap and through this gap the fluid from the intracellular fluid from this cell is flowing into the other cell so this is the gap junction this is a very specific characteristics of the cardiac muscle fiber that they are joined to each other through strong bonds called desmosomes and they also have gap junctions through which they can conduct any changes electrical changes in the cytoplasm of the one cell is going to be conducted to the other through passage of icf intracellular fluid into the other cell now the contractile myocardial cells are 50 to 100 mm long and their diameter is 10 to 20 mm end to end anastomosis here you have seen one end is being joined to the other end end to end anastomosis central nucleus the nucleus is central in arrangement in the cardiac muscle fiber the contractile no unit is called sarcomere it has got a band i band h band h zone and z lines and you have to remember what is the composition of a sarcomere from your knowledge of skeletal muscle apart from these myofibrils contractile myofibrils which are making the sarcomere the sarcoplasmic reticulum is very specially designed in the striated muscle fibers and t tubules in the sarcoplasmic reticulum are entering the cell substance at z lines the filaments present in the cardiac contractile cells are myosin filament actin filament troponin filament and tropomyosin filament the amino acid sequence is different from the skeletal muscle in tropomyosin of the skeletal muscle and the cardiac muscle these three are quite similar to each other here we see that the skeletal muscle cells can be rested for prolonged periods and only a fraction of them are activated in the given muscle during most contractions whereas every heart cell contracts with every beat of the heart this is a very important point that is different from the skeletal muscle that the heart is continuously beating every cardiac muscle fiber is continuously beating whereas the skeletal muscle fibers contract in turns the properties of these cardiac muscles that are different from the striated muscles are it is striated for forceful contraction 
but it is joining each other in end to end anastomosis and thus form a circular viscous in which the blood is stored and then pumped out of the heart number 2 it is not attached to the skeleton jab hum kehte hain skeletal muscle that means the muscle fiber is attached to the skeleton for movement of bones but cardiac muscle fiber is not the skeletal muscle fiber it is attached to each other end to end resulting in a rounded shaped viscous formation and the cardiac muscle fiber contracts according to sliding filament theory just like the skeletal muscle but this is under involuntary control so at this point we are seeing that the being striated it is similar to the skeletal muscle fiber but being a viscous visceral muscle fiber it has got different action it does contract according to sliding filament theory but it is not under the voluntary control of the body number 3 there are gap junctions in the cardiac muscle fiber and the skeletal muscle one muscle fiber the impulse goes and depolarizes whole of the muscle fiber but the skeletal muscle fiber when it is being depolarized it cannot in itself depolarize the other muscle fiber which is lying along its length the other muscle fiber needs another nerve so that it can be excited whereas in the cardiac muscle fiber when one cardiac muscle fiber is excited the impulse travels from one cell to the other through gap junctions by movement of intracellular fluid which has got electrical changes in it then there is frank starling's law frank starling's law means that the in contraction depends on the initial length of the fiber if we have larger initial length of the muscle fiber there will be strong contraction if we have smaller initial length of the muscle fiber there will be weak contraction in case of heart the decision how are you going to decide what is the length of the skeletal muscle fiber what is the length of the cardiac muscle fiber depends on how much the blood is present in the ventricle if more blood is present in the ventricle it will stretch the cardiac muscle fibers by the volume and because of that the cardiac muscle fibers will be able to contract forcefully the cardiac muscle fiber are supplied by autonomic nerves and cannot be controlled by our will whereas the skeletal muscle fibers are supplied by somatic nerves and these are called voluntary muscle fibers because we can ask them to work on our will number 6 is the muscle fibers act as two sensitia the atrial and the ventricular they are separated by the fibrous band connected only through the av node so this is a fibrous band containing atrioventricular valves and the semi lunar and pulmonary artery valves semi lunar valves of the aorta and the pulmonary artery valves all this portion is a fibrous band and it is separating the ventricular muscle fiber from the atrial muscle fiber which is attached upside either way okay okay so there is only one point the av node at which these two are connected and that we shall be talking later on that what is av node now coming to the seventh property of the cardiac muscle fiber the impulse or the action potential impulse or the action potential is conducted to whole muscle through gap junctions now when are you having fast conduction of impulse and when are you going to have slow conduction of impulse depends upon how many gap junctions are present in a specific cardiac muscle fiber so the specialized conducting tissue has more numerous gap junctions than the contractile tissue and then again from this 
contractile tissue, the specialized muscle tissue has got more speed in the Purkinje fibers as compared to the other pathways and that we shall be discussing later on. The contractility of the contractile muscle cells, that is the capacity, how effectively they are going to shorten and produce their function depends upon the calcium, amount of calcium in the extracellular fluid. Now, during plateau affection potential, there is influx of calcium ions. This means that the action potential that is coming and passing through the ventricular muscle there is a phase in which there is a plateau. During this plateau phase, calcium is coming into the muscle fiber. You have to study this in detail. This is extracellular fluid. This is the cell membrane of the cardiac muscle fiber. This is intracellular portion. This is the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This is the T-tubule that is dipping in extracellular fluid that is dipping into the substance of the muscle. These are the contractile proteins. And you see that as the action potential impulse passes through the cardiac muscle fiber and enters the T-tubule, in the T-tubule there are DHP receptors having calcium channels in them that allow extracellular fluid calcium to enter the cell. As the extracellular fluid calcium enters the cell, this produces a voltage change which opens these rhinodine receptors present in the sarcoplasmic reticulum of the cardiac muscle fiber so that as the channel is opened, Calcium comes out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cell cytoplasm. Amount of calcium coming from the ECF is less as compared to the amount of calcium coming from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. If less calcium enters the EC from the ECF into the cell, there will be less release of calcium from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. If more calcium enters, from the ECF into the cell, more and more calcium will be coming out into the cell cytoplasm from the sarcoplasmic reticulum. This calcium is then engaged in contraction. This was contraction due to entry of calcium into the cell that is a result of action potential coming to the T-tubule. Excitation means action potential coming to the T-tubule Contraction means contraction of the proteins, actin and myosin sliding over each other and the excitation and contraction are coupled through this entry of calcium from ECF into the cell and from sarcoplasmic reticulum into the cytoplasm. Now coming to the relaxation, when the action potential goes away, the calcium channels are closed. The calcium cannot come out of the sarcoplasmic reticulum. Calcium ATPase allows it to go back into the sarcoplasmic reticulum. When calcium is not present, tropomyosin covers the actin filaments. Relaxation of the muscle occurs. This calcium either goes into the sarcoplasmic reticulum or it goes out of the cell in exchange for sodium. The sodium that is being exchanged here is then forcefully extruded from the cell by the sodium potassium ATPase. So excitation contraction coupling means excitation coming from action potential into the cell, cardiac muscle fiber, this leading to calcium entering into the cell and this leading to contraction of the proteins. So we say calcium regulates the troponin in thin filaments that physically repositions the tropomyosin filament away from actin filament. We have studied it in the skeletal muscle fiber and we shall be studying it in detail 
in the cardiofacial fiber in the coming lectures sympathetic activity ki nervous system hota hai sympathetic nervous system so increase activity of the sympathetic nervous system release of certain hormones in the body that come to the blood and then to this area and stretch of the muscle by more blood within the ventricular muscle these three things sympathetic activity hormones and stretch affect the influx of calcium if you increase the amount of calcium contraction is better if you decrease the amount of calcium entering the cell contraction is weaker the ninth property of the cardiac muscle fiber is the myosin atpase it is an enzyme that activates the myosin filament site of the myosin if its activity is more as in the skeletal muscle you see fast movement of the skeletal muscle here in the cardiac muscle its activity and speed of its activity is low myosin atpase that is why the speed of contraction is slow now coming to the tenth property of the cardiac muscle fiber the refractory period it is the same period it is the time period in action potential of an excitable tissue आपने नर्व पढ़ ली है आपने स्केल्टल मसल पढ़ लिया है आपने स्मूथ मसल पढ़ लिया है और ये तीनों एक्साइटेबल टिश्यूज हैं हार्ट भी एक्साइटेबल टिश्यू है उन तीनों के अंदर आपने एक्शन पोटेंशियल पढ़ा है और उसमें आपने रिफ्रैक्टरी पीरियड भी पढ़ा है सो रिफ्रैक्टरी पीरियड इज द टाइम पीरियड इन एक्शन पोटेंशियल ऑफ एन एक्साइटेबल टिश्यू वेट इट कैन नॉट जनरेट एन अदर एक्शन पोटेंशियल ऑन रिसीविंग एन इम्पल्स the impulse comes from behind the the muscle generates an action potential but if the muscle is not in a situation to produce another action potential that is the refractory period the cardiac muscle has a prolonged refractory period as compared to the skeletal and smooth muscles as well as the nerve fibers how is this generated cardiac muscle has fast sodium channels that produce rapid depolarization these fast sodium channels will only reopen when their inactivation gates are opened at minus 70 millivolts so when the gates are closed if they are closed here when the gates are closed sodium channels are closed and no more sodium is coming in and the rest of the action potential is by virtue of slow sodium calcium channels which we shall be studying on the next page when the slow calcium sodium channels stop conducting impulse then the action potential comes down for repolarization and during this repolarization period when the impulse goes to minus 70 millivolts after that the inactivation gates open up and then the there is a chance of receiving another impulse and this area is the area where sodium channels have closed and after that slow sodium calcium channels allow influx of positive ions into the cell cardiac cell this is the initial repolarization and then the cell membrane of the cardiac muscle remains at a plateau and does not go down directly like a skeletal muscle fiber agar aapko yaad ho skeletal muscle fiber mein takriban is shakal ka action potential banta tha ye jo main is line ko extrapolate kar rahi hu niche ki taraf jab ke yahan par initial repolarization ke baad thodi der ke liye action potential is held at this level above 0 millivolt up till 10 millivolts here it is held so the cardiac muscle has slow sodium calcium channels that allow influx of calcium sodium after initial repolarization and the cardiac potential is held at 0 to 10 millivolts for long time that is 0.25 seconds sari baatein yaad rakhne ki hai 0.25 seconds is the refractory period of the cardiac muscle ke zero hai ye 200 hai ye 300 hai 0.25 seconds 
is the refractory period of the cardiac muscle and this is the period when the potential of the heart muscle action potential is maintained between 0 to 10 millivolts. The second impulse can be generated only when sodium inactivation gates reopen at minus 70 millivolts when the, re when the repolarization is occurring here at the point of minus 70 millivolts now the sodium inactivation gates have opened up and can accept another impulse if it comes. So the second impulse is avoided for as long as slow calcium sodium channels remain open and keep the potential as 10 to plus 10 to 0 millivolts and this is the mechanism of production of the refractory period of the heart. Advantage of long refractory period. The function of the skeletal muscle is different from the function of the cardiac muscle. The skeletal muscle needs tetanization for smooth activity. That is when it starts contracting more and more action potentials come through more and more motor units involvement and gradually the contraction becomes stronger and stronger to give its full effect and after that the muscle can relax. But here in the cardiac muscle, each time the cardiac muscle has to pump lot of blood out of the aorta or the pulmonary artery and if the contraction was not sustained for at least 0.3 seconds or 0.25 seconds, the blood that had been collected in the heart during its resting condition will not be able to go out and the effectiveness of the cardiac pumping will be lost. So for the heart to relax for a time in which you add lot of blood into the heart muscle and for the heart to contract for continuously for 0.3 seconds you need the long refractive period so that the cardiac muscle whole of the muscle contracts at one time and pumps the blood out into the aorta or pulmonary vessels. The cardiac muscle action potential is equal to 0.3 seconds. The contraction time is 0.3 seconds. Contraction starts and ends with the action potential. So no new impulse can be generated during action potential and the contraction cannot be added up on the previous contraction. Agar aapki contraction ke upar contraction a jaye, to filling time gaib ho jayega aur aapke paas cardiac output so the contraction cannot start on the previous contraction because of this refractory period. There is no tetanization and the relaxation of the ventricle allows filling of the chamber. Objective is to pump blood effectively. We have been talking about the uh, conducting tissue of the heart and the pacemaker tissue of the heart. So let us look at this picture, this diagram. This is a node in the right atrium. So this is the right atrium and this is the left atrium. This is a node in the right atrium and this is a V node in the right atrium. These are two pacemaker tissues present in the atria. From the right atrium, SA node, fibers go to the left atrium. This is interatrial fibers. These are fast conducting tissue. So, I am showing you conducting tissue or pacemaker tissue. This is pacemaker tissue. This is pacemaker tissue. And this blue line here from the right to the left atrium is interatrial conducting fibers. The blue lines, three blue lines from the SA node to the AV node are the three conducting fibers, fast acting, that are present in the atrium. From AV node, a bundle of conducting fibers passes into the ventricles. This is called bundle of His. This is again a conducting tissue. It has got fast conduction. Then there is branching of the fibers, nearly run ke fibers ko also dekhna hai, along the septum, here in the septum on the left side and here in the septum on the right side. This is again the same conducting fibers, bundle of his left branch, bundle of his right branch and then you see small arborizations. 
that are traversing the thickness of the muscle fiber. This is endocardium, this is pericardium, this is myocardium, and this is being traversed by these fibers. These fibers are Purkinje fibers, and they have got very fast conduction, 4 meter per second. They are, they are present in the left ventricle, and they are also present in the right ventricle. The conducting tissue is supplying whole area of the ventricle here as well as here. Whereas in the atria, the conducting tissue is supplying one fiber to the left atrium from the right, interatrial, interatrial fibers, and three branches, intraatrial fibers. Now you see the brown color, hai na, this is muscle tissue, contractile cells of the heart. This is the contractile cells of the left atrium. These are the contractile cells of the right atrium. These brown are the contractile cells of the right ventricle. These are the contractile cells of the left ventricle. And the blue tissue is the conducting tissue. So now after studying the contractile tissue, we have come to the study of the SA node. The SA node, ellipsoid cardiac tissue, ellipsoid yeshakale, this chakra ko kehte hain ellipsoid. Ellipsoid cardiac tissue in the right atrium, this is the right atrium, at entry of superior vena cava. Where is the superior vena cava? It is entering the right atrium here, and here at the entry there is a conducting you know, pacemaker tissue called the SA node. This is different from these brown cells, by so there are very few myofibrils in this blue conducting tissue and the pacemaker tissue as compared to the brown contractile tissue. There are P cells, pacemaker cells in this node, SA node, and transitional fibers at the periphery and the nerve cells. Now you see that these blue pacemaker cells are surrounded by myocardial contractile cells. So, in between the two, there are transitional fibers. This is muscle cardiac, this is cardiac muscle. In the beach, there are transitional fibers that have some properties, some properties that have some properties that have some changes from one to the other. And pacemaker cells from fibers that have muscle cells. These fibers are transitional fibers that have some less Conducting and more contractile होते हैं और फिर बिल्कुल fully contractile cells brown आ जाते हैं। तो आप ये देख रहे हैं इसके अलावा यहाँ पर nerve cells हैं जो के इसको आके influence कर सकते हैं और इसके अंदर इसकी activity को change कर सकते हैं और nerve endings हैं जो इसके लिए मौजूद हैं। The eleventh property of the cardiac muscle fiber is that it can generate its own rhythm. It is in present in the cardiac muscle fiber. If you remove all the nerves from the heart and you keep it in normal saline and supply it sufficient oxygen, it is going to produce an impulse and that impulse is going to travel through the whole of the heart and is going to cause contraction of the heart. This property of the cardiac muscles to generate its own rhythm is maximally seen in the SA node, then to some extent in the AV node, and even you can see it by the contractile cardiac cells in time of need. The P cells in the SA node generate this rhythm at a rate of 70 to 80 beats per minute, and in the AV node, this rhythm can be generated at 50 to 60 per minute when the SA node is not working. The ventricle generates its own rhythm at 30 to 40 per minute when the AV node is blocked. The property of the autorhythmicity of the SA node is due to its prepotential, and now we have to study what is the prepotential of the SA node. The mechanism of generation of prepotential, slow influx of sodium and calcium ions, this is minus 60 millivolts, calcium ions start going into the cell membrane slowly from the ECF. And the 
potential reaches minus 50 then the calcium ions also start entering into the cell membrane from the ECF and a level is reached that is minus 40 millimeter per curry. This is the threshold potential and then the impulse can be generated. So how the free potential is formed? It is formed by slowly influx of sodium through sodium channels and then slow influx of calcium through transient calcium channels drifting the potential from minus 60 millivolts gradually and gradually to minus 40 millivolts which is the threshold potential and once the membrane potential reaches the threshold level it is bound to produce an action potential so the action potential will be fired spontaneously if the level of the membrane potential reaches minus 40 millivolts and this is here you are seeing this black line as pre potential and you are seeing this red line as the action potential of the assay node as we are studying the contractile and the conducting tissue of the heart we have seen the action potential of the SA node which has got a sliding upwards slope of pre potential and then sudden spontaneous onset of action potential when the membrane potential reaches threshold level now here in the ventricular action potential we will see that there are five phases of the action potential phase 0, 1, 2, 3 and 4. What happens during these five phases? First of all we shall be taking the description and then we will be seeing the diagram. The depolarization in the phase 0 is due to fast voltage gated sodium channels giving it a spike. बहुत तेजी से सीधा एक्शन पोटेंशियल ऊपर जाता है सोडियम चैनल्स खुलते हैं फास्ट सोडियम चैनल्स और स्पाइक पोटेंशियल अचीव होता है फेज 1 देयर इज अ स्मॉल स्पाइक ड्यू टू ट्रांजिएंट रैपिड रिपोलराइजेशन जो ही सोडियम चैनल बंद होते हैं तो मेम्ब्रेन पोटेंशियल एकदम नीचे आना शुरू होता है और इस वक्त थोड़ा सा पोटेशियम फास्ट पोटेशियम की फ्लक्स जो है वो हो रहा होता है टू ब्रिंग द मेम्ब्रेन पोटेंशियल अ लिटिल डाउनवर्ड्स and producing a spike. Then comes the phase 2 of the ventricular action potential. The voltage gated calcium channels of long lasting type are opened up and they are responsible for plateau in the action potential. Now we have a little diagram to next page for Jayenge to take it. Phase 3 potassium channels, these are voltage gated transient potassium channels and leaky potassium channels both are responsible for repolarization and they are also contributing to the plateau phase 4 the ventricular muscle has no pre potential if action potential takes 0.25 seconds and starts after 0.16 seconds of the SA nodal action potential action potential takes 0.25 seconds and starts after 0.16 seconds of the SA node action potential. Isoelectric resting membrane potential is 0.55 seconds or 0.55 seconds in 72 beats per minute heart rate. Sodium potassium ATPase reverts back the ionic composition of the cell during resting membrane potential. <laughs> दिमाग में रखना है और कंपेयर करना है एक कागज पेंसिल लेकर उस पर एक्शन पोटेंशियल ऑफ द नर्व फाइबर और एक्शन पोटेंशियल ऑफ द मसल फाइबर This is just for the completion of the slides so that whatever we have studied as the ventricular action potential and the SA nodal action potential, we can identify them when we are going to study it in, again in the detail next in the next lecture.
So this is the stage four, phase four of the ventricular action potential. That is no prepotential is present here. Then you have got this fast opening of the fast voltage gated sodium channels. And these fast voltage gated sodium channels produce a spike potential in the ventricular action potential. After this, there is a fast outlet of potassium, fast efflux of potassium, and then the calcium channels, slow calcium sodium channels, start entry of potassium into the of the calcium into the cell. Now, one side of the potassium is coming out, so this is repolarization. और कैल्शियम भी पॉजिटिव आयन है वो अंदर जा रहा है जब कैल्शियम अंदर जा रहा है और पोटेशियम बाहर आ रहा है तो एक पॉजिटिव आयन जो है वो बाहर आ रहा है और डबल पॉजिटिव आयन जो है वो अंदर जा रहा है और इस तरह बैलेंस हुए हुए हैं कि प्लेटू बन गया है सो द एक्शन पोटेंशियल इज नॉट कमिंग डाउन बट इट इज स्टेइंग हियर बिटवीन 0 टू 10 मिली वोल्ट्स हियर फॉर सम टाइम सो दैट देयर इज a longer refractory period of the cardiac muscle fiber, ventricular muscle fiber. After that, when the calcium channels close at the given time, sodium channels ka pata hai na, jab unka time khatam ho jate hai, wo close ho jate hai. Isi tira calcium channels, long lasting calcium channels hai, lekin inka koi khas time hai. Jab inka time khatam ho jate hai, to phir ye band ho jate hai. Or potassium efflux jo hai, wo potassium ki Fast potassium efflux hota hai aur ye resting membrane potential par vaapis pahunch jata hai. Total time hai 250 milliseconds, isko 0.25 seconds bhi aap kehte hai. Isko dekhiye aap, ye hai aapke paas SA nodal action potential. It is different from the action potential of the ventricle. You see the baseline resting membrane potential was minus 90 millivolts here and you see that there is no baseline, CD line nahi hai, jis mein aap kahe, KD action potential jo hai, wo iska baseline resting membrane potential minus 60 hogi, balke the potential goes up and down and up and down and up and down. So you can say that there is an unstable resting membrane potential and this is because of leakiness of the sodium channels that allow Leaking of sodium from the leaking of sodium from the sodium channels into the SA nodal cells. Positive ion hai, under jayegi a depolarization ho jayegi. Jab wo depolarization minus 50 pe pahunchegi, the calcium channels will open up. These are again transient calcium channels which open up depending on the voltage at minus 50 millivolts. They are voltage gated, so when the voltage is minus 50 millivolts, the transient calcium channels open up and take the potential from minus 60 millivolts to minus 40 millivolts in the shape of a slope. This slope is called prepotential. This is phase 4. Now comes the phase 0. Phase 0 is the fast influx of calcium from long lasting calcium channels and then the channels close gradually so it is a tip here not like the fast sodium channels the fast calcium channels do not give a sharp spike it gives you a rounded spike so there is no phase one and no phase two in the action potential rather phase zero and after that phase three phase four phase zero and phase three phase four Phase 0 and phase 3 are the three major phases of the SA nodal action potential, which is again repeated when it reaches the minus 60 millivolts level automatically. 